Get your decade ahead horoscope for your sign at NadiaShaw.com. Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to the Decade Ahead special horoscope looking at the 2020s. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing decade it is. If I had to choose an overall theme, I would say that we are going to go from powerful earth and water energy to a sense of air and fire to a certain extent as well. And that means going from energy that is embodied, that is focused on results and production and what the uh, authority figures believe and think and are to an energy that becomes much more cerebral, much more individualistic. And all of us in at least one area of life are going to find that things accelerate, start to move much more quickly and also we are going to find collectively as well that our focus, our energies, and where it is that we're making huge gains goes through a profound transformation also. I can't wait to tell you about it all. Stay tuned to the later part of this video where I have preview horoscopes for each and every sign where I tried to pick out and choose what I thought was going to be most important for you based on your sign uh, coming up for the decade ahead. Of course, looking at the decade ahead, it's a larger trend, but I am always here week to week in the superstar space on my website, NadiaShaw.com, month to month here on YouTube and lots of special horoscopes, including year ahead horoscopes as well. Uh, that you can find on my website. But for this video, we really are focusing in on the larger trend. So I'm not gonna be going year to year uh, with every single thing that every single planet is doing. The other stuff, like for example, when we talk about Jupiter, when we talk about eclipses, it's only really to affirm these larger movements. But for now, and for this video, I'm very interested in exploring uh, some of the larger themes that we can expect as a collective and all the ways in which we can expect the world to change. And it really is that big. Some astrologers have said, that once Pluto moves into the sign of Aquarius, which happens in the middle of this decade, that is the official start of the age of Aquarius. You know, I remember Jonathan Kainer used to write about the age of Aquarius. He was hugely influential to me when I was just a budding uh, student of astrology, just someone who loved astrology. He was so much a part of my life, truly uh, one of our more influential uh, people who ever lived in astrology, Jonathan Kainer. And uh, I remember he used to say that we are now transitioning. We are in the middle of that space between the age of Pisces and the age of Aquarius. Um, if there's any doubt that we are stepping into that age of Aquarius fully, well, that is going to become very clear once we get to the middle of the decade and Pluto changes signs. And uh, the benefits of that, but also some of the dark side of that is gonna show itself as well. My understanding of the age of Aquarius was tremendously influenced by uh, Carl Jung and an essay that he wrote called Eon, in which he talks about uh, the transition between the age of Pisces that we have been in and the age of Aquarius. Now the age of Pisces, we can think about it. It's been a time of uh, sort of prophets, but also false prophets. It's been a time of inspiration and compassion. We've had these examples of tremendous compassion uh, and wanting a personal connection to divine energy, wanting a spiritual experience. Uh, we think about figures like the Buddha, like uh, Jesus. These are very Piscean figures um, and archetypes, really. Uh, as part of the collective consciousness. But as we shift gears and as we move forward, um, the energy becomes much more uh, Aquarian, but still with a dichotomy. The dichotomy in the age of Pisces was divine inspiration, uh, but the flip side of it was also delusion as well. Now with the age of Aquarius, uh, on one uh, part of it and one understanding of it, is that it is very humanitarian. It is an energy that is very much about caring for others, about the collective. Um, 
But the flip side of it is that it is also an energy of hyper individuality. And you can actually see this in the glyphs for these signs. So the age of Pisces is basically like two uh, C's, if you will, connected by a single line. And I will put that somewhere on the screen. The glyph for Aquarius is two waves, essentially mirroring each other. And so you can see in these glyphs that there is that sense of duality that is symbolized by these signs. And I don't see this duality going away because it is indicative that there is these two sides, very stark different sides to each of these signs. So we'll be exploring that in a moment. But what is also important to understand is that where we are now is not where we are going to be. And the truth is it never is. Um, we as humanity are evolving. We as humanity are changing. And I'd like to think that, especially now with as much awareness as we have, that we can choose not to just be sort of passively going along with the waves wherever they take us, but rather we can choose to be a force of the higher vibration of any energy or any energetic time that we find ourselves in. And of course, we'll be looking at that as well. So let's put aside the age of Aquarius for a moment. I will return to that because we're going to talk a lot about how the energy shifts in powerful ways uh, once Pluto moves into the sign of Aquarius. But I want to start with where we are as we are finishing this decade. We are in as I'm making this video in 2019 and as we start the new decade because it is going to be somewhat of a crescendo right out of the gate, uh, right around January 12 of 2020, give or take a day on either side, depending on where you are on the planet. Well, this has been a time that astrologers have been talking about for a long time. I remember being at a conference, an astrology conference in 2012, and astrologers were talking about this, January 2020, January 2020. And that is because we are going to have the meeting in the sky of Saturn and Pluto. And this is happening in Earth sign Capricorn. Now think about Earth, right? What does Earth represent? Well, Earth is understood as home, uh, as our physical bodies. It's an energy that is embodied. It's also an energy that has associations with uh, tradition, uh, with uh, family and with production as well in terms of an understanding of what it is that you produce, uh, what labor you are exerting, what it is that you're putting out. Um, it's also an energy that tends to um, have a certain reverence for authority and hierarchy as well. Now, wherever Pluto goes, we have a uh, we are invited to explore and to consider what the dark side of this energy could be. But also uh, we are asked to be a force of transformation in these very areas where it is that we see darkness. Uh, we are asked to choose and to amplify what it is that could uh, transform it from the inside out to see what it is that other people might not want to see because it's not always pretty to explore the darker side of an energy. But in being honest with ourselves, we're able to transcend and transform that energy and raise that vibration. Well, when Pluto meets Saturn in the sky, it is an intensifying of the energy that we have been in since 2008. So if you think back to 2008, it was quite incredible, actually. I remember it like it was yesterday. I remember it because um, a lot of astrologers are talking about this, right? And uh, Capricorn energy has to do with social structures. It's sort of like the skeleton of the world that guides our life. And what we saw was uh, very immediately sort of uh, the economies around the world uh, didn't do so well, very quickly revealed their dark side. But I remember at the time, we had some harmonious energy playing out between Saturn and Pluto. So Saturn was at the time in Virgo was trining Pluto as well. And it was, it was incredible. It was almost to the day of the perfection of this trine. And we had Jupiter supporting this energy as well that uh, we had the launch of so many different um, uh, sort of stimulus packages around the world. 
And I found that uh, quite incredible how quickly the symbol became realized, how quickly we were interacting with it. And so it is important to know and to pay attention because things can be that obvious sometimes. Things can change as dramatically sometimes. But also, we are in this time of change right now in 2019. I spoke about it in the year ahead video for 2019 that's on YouTube as well, where I talked about how over the course of 2019, it's sort of the divine preparation as Pluto and Saturn get mighty close, but are also moving over the south node. And this essentially is asking us to consider um, where it is that karmic closures are being asked to be made. These two planets, Saturn and Pluto, will be meeting in the sign of Capricorn. The last time this happened was about 500 years ago. So the Protestant Reformation is very closely associated with the last time these two planets met in the sign of Capricorn. And I think that that really is at the root of uh, how we understand power today. And it is Capricorn that is a sign of power um, and the power in the world and the power in a society. It is going to be this meeting that denotes the very beginning of a shift of power and a, a different power emerging, whether it's our definition, uh, whether it is how it is exercised or who has it. Uh, we are going to have the very beginning of a larger trend that we are going to be carrying forward for centuries to come. So it is truly very consequential. Again, I spoke about it at length in the year ahead video. So you might want to have a look at that to explore it more. And of course, I'll talk about this in the actual year ahead video in 2020. But to me, for the decade ahead, it's not so much about this meeting. Yes, this meeting is a big deal, without a doubt. But it's about what comes right after that. And what comes right after that is that Saturn starts dipping in and out of the sign of Aquarius. And I believe that this is going to be the beginning of a preview. And it is going to be in the uh, coming three years, really till the end of 2022, that Saturn moving through the sign of Aquarius is gonna give us a little bit of a preview of what Pluto moving through the sign of Aquarius starting in 2024 for the better part of 20 years. Well, what is that going to mean for us in our individual lives? What is it going to mean for the collective? This is where we are going to start looking at it, talking about it. Um, but it's going to be the subtle beginning of what we will immerse ourselves into once we get to the middle of the decade. Now, one of the heightened moments of what we have to look forward to is going to come at the end of 2020, right in December 2020. We are going to have what the ancients called the Great Conjunction. And this is the meeting of Saturn and Jupiter. And so these two planets tend to meet every 19 to 20 years or so. And when they meet, the ancients thought that this was a time of some dramatic change, a, a change of leaders, a change of power, um, a change in a country or in the world as well. Um, if you think about it, for example, I'll give you one example. It is believed that uh, Jesus was born under the conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter in the sign of Pisces, um, because the three wise men were astrologers after all. Uh, they were magi. They were uh, practitioners of what today we would call occultism. And one of the occult, right? Occult is essentially an esoteric practice, which is like a, a secret uh, wisdom that is there. And one of those is broadly understood as uh, astrology as well as belonging under that very broad umbrella. So they saw an astrological symbol, they interpreted it, they understood what it was that it could mean, and they followed it up with action. And therefore, this uh, very powerful moment, uh, regardless of what you believe religiously, regardless of whether you think it was a mythological or a literal moment, um, it has been one of the uh, truly defining turns when we look at the overall uh, understanding of what changed and when it changed. So this is the great conjunction, and it is going to be taking place in the sign of Aquarius. 
this is going to be the beginning. This is when we're going to hear of the launch of new things, of the programs that are being worked on, on what it is that the age of Aquarius could bring for us. It is going to start to become a little bit more obvious or perhaps a lot more obvious at this time. So let me take a step back, right? The sign of Aquarius, air energy versus earth energy. You look at cultures where earth energy is more dominant, and these tend to be cultures where uh, you have people who um, take a lot of pride in the work that they do. There's an emphasis on what you're producing. There's an emphasis on tradition and family uh, and living a more embodied experience. But the downside of that, uh, the darker side of that, is that sense of hyper uh, capitalism, as some people have called it, or that sense of overemphasis on uh, what is being produced rather than the intention behind it. And of course, there are good things and not so good things about having societies that are very traditional or very family oriented. One of the great things is that you have people looking out for you, right? You're not alone in the world. But one of the not so great things is that you are kind of defined by others and it becomes very hard uh, to move in a direction that feels like it is of your own individual calling. Now contrast that with societies that are very air oriented, uh, very cerebral energy within those societies. So I am thinking of Toronto where I was born and raised. I'm thinking of Canada as well. Um, air energy is very cerebral and it has some great things about it. Societies with a lot of air energy um, tend to emphasize things like education and access to education. Um, they emphasize ideas and the value of ideas, contributing ideas to society and to the world, intellectual pursuits as well. These are also societies that tend to um, prioritize equality as well. And that is because on the level of mind, on the level of ideas, uh, regardless of you know what you look like, what the shell uh, is that you are in this incarnation in, um, ideas can be a great equalizer. And what it is that you have to contribute on a level of mind can also be something that uh, brings a more level playing field, if you will. But sort of the, the flip side of that, the dark side of that is that societies where we see an overemphasis on uh, air energy uh, can also be spaces where there is a lot of alienation as well. Uh, I'm thinking about the ideas of Michel Foucault. I'm thinking about um, the ideas of Max Weber. Uh, these were philosophers who talked about um, the sense of um, what Max Weber called uh, modern alienation or the, the alienation in a postmodern world, which is basically this idea that we don't really feel connected to others. Uh, we feel very removed and therefore we feel isolated even if we are interacting with other people on the surface, in many ways we are alone. And uh, this idea of disconnection, of disembodiment, uh, tends to be something that uh, fosters depression as well. And in these societies, you can see that depression can be a little bit of an epidemic. So every energy has its good things and has its things that maybe are not so easy for that particular culture or that particular society to deal with. So now we get to the great conjunction, right? And we start to sense that there's a change and a shift of power. But what happens is we get into 2021 and this configuration of Jupiter and Saturn begins to square Uranus. Now Uranus is in this decade, in the first part of this decade until 2026, moving through Earth sign Taurus. Now it is a Uranus that is a very um, removed energy, right? It's the ruling planet of Aquarius. Uh, and so it's an energy that is uh, hyper mind. It is about technology. It is about, again, ideas as well. It's about scientism, but it is also a planet that a lot of astrologers think of as our patron planet, uh, meaning that it represents the blending of science and art. Um, and so again, we're looking at this uh, dichotomy that plays out even with our understanding of the planet Uranus and that as well can be seen in the glyph. 
as Uranus is moving through the sign of Taurus, and again, I don't want to say again and again, oh, I did a special horoscope, I did a sign, right? You can see that on YouTube. Just assume when I'm talking about big energies that there either is or there will be a special horoscope about it. It is now with Uranus moving through the sign of Taurus that um, we are bringing a sense of detachment to what otherwise is a very embodied, very attached energy of our uh, physicalness in the world. And of course, the sign of Taurus being an earth energy, it has to do with earth right? It has to do with our relationship to the earth as well. And where is it that new technologies are going to come in and change our understanding of our environment and our earth, in some cases, very dramatically so. Uh, and also not to mention the economy, money, currency uh, is also strongly associated with the sign of Taurus as well. But what is going to be happening is that we are going to have to figure out how to reconcile in sometimes very dramatic moments this trend of elevation, this trend of a very heightened cerebral energy with the desires of the earth and what it is that the earth is asking for, uh, what the practical reality is and bringing technology into that and how people feel about that, well, chances are there is gonna be some resistance to some of the changes that are taking place for us as a collective to matters having to do with how we interact with the earth, to matters that have to do with how we understand currency and use currency around the world and so much more. But what is especially interesting to me is that it is going to be in 2021 that we are also going to have the asteroid series connect with uh, Uranus as well. And in particular, as we get into the later part of 2021 and Saturn starts squaring Uranus for the third and final time, it will do so while Ceres is conjunct Uranus, is hand in hand with Uranus. And this means a few different things. So if you think about Ceres, uh, in mythology, Ceres uh, is uh, also the mother uh, of Persephone. So Ceres is also called Demetra. And as the mother of Persephone, she is uh, the goddess or the divine energy that rules over grains, right? You think of the word cereal. It comes from Ceres um, and the earth, right? And the seasons as well. And you think about the myth of uh, Demetra and how her daughter, Persephone, uh, some myths say she was kidnapped by, by Pluto, by Hades, uh, and taken underground sort of against her will. Other mythologies, and especially modern interpretations, have said that she might have been sort of taken, uh, but it was really Pluto that attempted to seduce her, and that maybe she was much more willing uh, than it appeared on the surface, that the idea of um, actually pulling away from your family unit uh, for love was such a, uh, a controversial thing that we um, could only imagine that someone would want to be with Hades, would want to go to the depths of uh, what is underneath the surface, uh, only against one's will, but not willingly. And so there are some myths that suggest uh, that Hades seduced her and she fell in love with him and she wanted to be with him. Uh, other myths say that it wasn't by choice, uh, but regardless, uh, when Persephone left the, the earth and went to the underworld, um, there was this great mourning that took place. And uh, as a result, uh, the earth grew very cold because Ceres was the uh, patron of uh, grain, right? And, and growth and renewal on the planet. Uh, she was the one who oversaw the harvests. And so the earth grew very cold and barren. And so as a compromise, sort of on the other gods kind of stepped in and said, okay, look, let Demetra have Persephone half of the year and let Hades have Persephone the other half of the year. And that was the compromise. And so um, mythologically, this is why we have seasons. It is during the colder months uh, that Persephone is in the underworld uh, and therefore Ceres, also called Demetra, is uh, not interested in tending the land, not interested in the harvest. Um, now, this is a very crude and very simplistic understanding of a myth that has been explored extensively by uh, academics uh, and historians. And so I want to acknowledge that. 
Um, but having said that, just Ceres conjunct Uranus is a very dramatic example in the sign of Taurus of how agriculture could go through a dramatic change at this time in 2021. And given that it is the sign of Aquarius that is associated with the masses, given that um, Saturn is very much about tradition and how things have been done and what is established, there could be some very powerful resistance that does happen to these uh, changes in how uh, agriculture is done, how agriculture is produced. And it is also Uranus representing like sort of the latest technologies uh, that could fundamentally change the way in which we understand uh, grains and how it is that they are produced. So these are some things to look out for. The sign of Aquarius as well has to do with technologies. And so it's almost like, you know, whether we like it or not, there could be some changes uh, where it comes to uh, farming that are going to last. But in our own personal lives, Ceres is symbolic of give and take, of balance, of, of care, of healthy ways of care, of how we are nurtured, how we nurture ourselves, and understanding that there are times where there is abundance, when we're able to give a lot to ourselves, and times when um, we have to hold back, whether willingly or not. Uh, times when in order to reap, there also has to be sacrifice as well. And so all of us are going to be looking at these themes and at least one area of life very differently than we have before and in some cases rather dramatically and we may find that there is resistance from the people around us what we consider our collective uh, we may find that there is a resistance within us as well as we are challenging uh, the traditions from which we come and where it is that we desire to go forward from here and so this is going to be a very important turning point for a lot of us this is where we are going to get some more powerful glimpses into what the future is going to hold for us now to add to this what is going to happen simultaneously is that we are going to have eclipses taking place in the same sign that uranus is moving through the sign of taurus and in its opposite sign as well and it is these eclipses that are going to amplify uranian energy that are going to amplify some of these lessons and are going to bring some of these changes at moments rather dramatically so now that is going to be 2021 at the end of 2022 uh it is really till the end of 2022 that saturn remains in the sign of aquarius and then leaves we get a breather it is as we fast forward to 2023 that in the spring only pluto will move into the sign of aquarius before retrograding back into the sign of capricorn and this is where i want to return to this understanding of um, the age of Aquarius and how it actually uh, is going to be making itself known in very powerful ways at this time. Because the age of Aquarius um, is likely going to be a time when we see this dichotomy that I mentioned, there's a sense of hyper scientism at this time as well, but also this sense of, of, of dividing, right? These are the new age people, these are the scientists. But also, you know, it was Stephen Forrest. And if you don't know who Stephen Forrest is, you're really missing out. He's an incredible, uh, one of our living legend astrologers alive today. And um, if you are a student of astrology, you definitely know Stephen Forrest. Uh, when you first embark as a student of astrology, beyond just a consumer of astrology or a fan of astrology, once you really start caring and wanting to learn about what these symbols mean a little bit more deeply, you're going to come across the work of, of Stephen Forrest because he really is very prolific. I've interviewed him a few times on my channel, so you can watch that as well. Uh, I've got quite a few videos here, so try not to mention them too much. But yes, they are there. There is this uh, body of work that is here so far, and I'm looking forward to seeing what it's going to become over the course of this decade as well. Uh, but Stephen Forrest, in one of his newsletters, I would encourage you to sign up to his newsletters as well because they are uh, so informative and uh, he's such a beautiful writer. And he said that um, if Pluto in Capricorn is the 
dark side of more conservative policies because Earth energy is considered more on the conservative side. It is going to be Pluto in Aquarius that brings the dark side uh, of more progressive policies. And so again, I say this with some trepidation because I know that uh, especially right now, as we are the at the end of the, the tens, the 2010s, uh, it can feel very divided and it can feel like there is, uh, you know, very strong political opinions out there. And so I want to kind of, um, you know, acknowledge that, but I don't want to be in that. I don't want to take a part of that. And I don't want to pass a judgment as to, you know, what's right or what's wrong. Every energy has a higher vibration and a lower vibration. Every energy has a light side and a dark side. And, you know, I, I sit back as an astrologer, I try to practice, and I think one of our tasks as astrologers is to practice healthy detachment, is to not be so attached to outcomes that we only see what we want to see. Because at the end of the day, we as astrologers are interpreting symbols. And what we see is going to be based on our own worldview. It is us as astrologers who are bringing ourselves to the sky. And you can't have astrology without the astrologer. You can't have astrology without someone there to interpret what it is that is being seen. And that interpretation is going to be based on all the things that we as an astrologer have experienced leading up to that moment of interpretation and how we interpreted it and all the things that influenced us and made us who we are and what we believe about the world is going to show very apparently in our interpretations. And so I want to be mindful of that. And therefore, it is so important. I think one of our great work as astrologers is to practice healthy detachment, uh, to try not to say that one side is better than another, because if we are able to do that, then at least we give the symbols a chance uh, to speak in a way that can be more honest. Uh, but yeah, you if you read any given astrologer, or you hear astrologers, you watch astrologers, uh, very quickly they will make their worldview known simply based on their interpretation. So my worldview is that we are uh, moving towards greater love and greater wisdom, that that's what we are here to do, to amplify love and wisdom that much more. And what I call love and wisdom is essentially what others have called divine energy or just love or God. Um, when I was a um, when I was a graduate student, I came across the work of Ibn Arabi and I wrote my dissertation on his work as well. And I kind of made a promise to his spirit that, you know, if you help me get this master's, I'm going to talk about you as much as possible. You know, I'm going to let people know how strong your legacy is, how strong your spirit is. And uh, Ibn Arabi was a, a Sufi mystic and an astrologer who lived about a thousand years ago. And he um, talked about, and one of his big uh, sort of understandings, articulations, is what is called the divine breath. And so essentially the divine breath is us. We are the living embodiment of the divine. Uh, sorry, he called it the magnificent breath, rather, the magnificent breath. And we are the magnificent, and the magnificent is the divine. We are the divine. And with every experience we have, it is like the divine is taking another breath, and that breath is expanding more and more, and being known to more and more, and being known in new ways that it would not have been known had you not been there to experience that exact emotion, that exact elation, uh, that exact sadness, that it is all divine, it is all magnificent, and it is all part of a new way and another way and a more expansive way that God or the magnificent or the divine or love or love and wisdom experiences itself in a way that it would not have had you not been there to, ex to feel and to experience and to be in that exact moment of happiness and elation and joy or sadness. And therefore, every experience you have is ultimately divine. This is the approach that I bring to the sky, and that is going to determine my interpretations. So, yes, there is a dark side to conservative policies. There is a light and an evolved side to conservative policies as well. There is a dark side to progressive policies, and there is a light, uh, uh, an evolved side to progressive policies as well. And we have chosen a world. We have created a world. We have co-created a world of 
uh, of duality. We have co-created a world where we are experiencing these energies in their full spectrum, right? Especially at this point in history, there isn't a lot of balance. There isn't really a lot of, okay, we're gonna stay in the middle ground. We're gonna take the best of this and the best of that. We're gonna put it together. It feels, especially since the discovery of Pluto and with the discovery of Pluto, wherever Pluto goes, we go to extremes. We're gonna go extreme, uh, what people would call high end or extreme low end. But we have been in this accelerated understanding of ourselves and our power and the extremes that that understanding can take has been showing up as Pluto was discovered and has been moving through these different signs. So it was Stephen Forrest that said, right now, dark side of conservative policies once we get to um, Pluto and Aquarius, it's the dark side of progressive policies. But we as individuals, we as we are interacting with the cosmos, we can choose to raise the energy. We can choose to be a force of positive transformation within ourselves and in our lives as well. But here's the thing, not only will Pluto start stepping in and out of the sign of Aquarius, but what is going to happen is Neptune. Neptune is going to reach an anorectic degree. Uh, and essentially that is astro talk, that is nerd talk for saying. Um, Neptune is going to get to the very end of the sign of Pisces and is going to reach uh, a part of the sign of Pisces that is considered especially concentrated, especially amplified. And it is going to bring the water energy very much to the surface, which means the age of Pisces. It is going to be sort of this, um, this understanding or this experience, this full on being in the age of Pisces, sort of the, the final party of the age of Pisces is going to be taking place at this time. So again, that can be a spiritual connection. Uh, it can be a desire to, to know spirit deeply, to connect with source. Uh, it can be extreme examples of compassion that we are going to see that will light up the world. But it can also be, um, you know, this idea of cults and delusion and self-harm can also show themselves at this time as well. And I'm so sorry to say that, um, but that is one way that this energy can manifest. And so if we know this, it's a good idea to pay attention to what's going on around you, to the people in your life to make sure that they are feeling connected, to make sure that especially people, if they are impressionable, uh, that they are using this energy in its higher end to inspire them to tap into the best of their imagination, to envision a more loving, more compassionate world. These are wonderful ways to use these energies. But if you see someone going in a direction uh, where they're not necessarily being very grounded, they're not necessarily seeing things from a measured perspective, um, or they are uh, connecting to a spiritual fervor in a way that brings harm to themselves or to others, uh, sort of a spiritual fervor uh, that is not based on compassion, uh, but rather is uh, based on values that uh, are not uh, necessarily uniting or loving, then we can be there for them. We can be that force of transformation for them to help them to elevate out of it. And so I hope that we more and more are able to take that responsibility. You think about, I am my neighbor's keeper, right? That is uh, age of Pisces, very age of Pisces to be your, your neighbor's keeper. If we're willing to do that, then we can help a lot of people. And it's incredible how it is that we can help people. But I also think with this is that we are gonna see a lot of people moving towards uh, spirituality, alternative spiritualities, um, and things like astrology as well. Because I believe, um, you know, as my former professor Patrick Curry articulated, that what astrology does is it reanimates the cosmos. It brings us out of our isolation. It uh, helps us out of our alienation because if the sky becomes imbued with spirit, then we come to appreciate how we are connected to spirit. If we are cultivating a relationship with the sky, then we are ultimately cultivating a relationship with ourselves as well. And it is a relationship that is happening and that brings us out of our alienation. 
And I think that this energy, we will see this and have seen this with the age of Pisces and that's gonna magnify, but we're really going to see this that much more in the age of Aquarius. And I think that's why right now we're at the very beginning where astrology is really starting to grow rapidly, is reaching this whole new generation. You know, a lot of places have talked about the millennials, how much uh, the millennials love astrology. I have two cousins who are both in university. They are millennial age in university. And every time they see me, they tell me about how people are just so into astrology, people their own age, um, that it's uh, it's incredible how everybody just knows everybody's sign. It's just a part of it. And I think that that is because astrology is part of that answer to the alienation that we feel when we live on our computers, when our whole lives are sort of in our phones and we're so focused on what's happening on a screen, a little screen or a medium screen or a big screen, it's uh, it's like a symbol of connectivity, but we are more disconnected than ever. And it is astrology that helps us to feel more connected um, to each other, to the planets, to ourselves. Um, and that brings us out of that alienation that we can feel. And so there are ways in which to address the energy that is going to be there as we start seeing this alienation come to the surface in very powerful ways in 2024. Now fast forward to 2025. That is when Neptune will move into the sign of Aries. So this is a big deal. This is moving from water to fire. Neptune, god of the seas, right? It's a very water energy. We understand it as very water. What happens when water meets fire? Well, essentially it evaporates. Like, yes, it may boil, but really what it does is it turns from water into air. It turns into something else. And so it isn't just that the energy is going to change to fire, but rather it's going to kind of be subdued. The water energy, the energy of intuition is going to be less emphasized, is not going to take as much of a dominant place for us as a collective, as much as uh, we are going to start to emphasize things like your own will, your own determination, um, channeling your emotional energy your spiritual energy, which is what water can represent, which is what Neptune represents, towards uh, your aims. Uh, using your will more wisely, which is what the higher end and the understanding of, a, of Aries energy is, is about your own will and your own determination. Now, how is it that you are going to focus and channel that emotional spiritual energy towards what you want to happen, towards better exercising your will. Well, that is going to become part of what we're talking about more and more. And what we are going to start to feel is where we need to go as a collective. Now, what is going to be happening here also is that Saturn is going to uh, be moving in here, connecting with Neptune as well. This is going to help on the one hand to ground this energy, uh, but also, you know, I think about this as Saturn is the ancient ruler of Aquarius. Uh, Saturn is also the, the uh, ruler, the traditional and modern ruler of Capricorn. And this is ultimately going to be energy that is grounding the water and is going to be more focused on that element of the results as well. This is energy that's going to say, okay, how can we actually bring an understanding of spirit to the age of Aquarius? And where is it that spirit serves matter in our aim, in our will, in our creativity, in our creative expression? And so for some people, you know, this, uh, this amplification of this emphasis of the self and you can do it and you can make it happen, um, it is almost going to be like trying to pin it down, trying to understand how to better harness the will but at the same time feeling like, okay, there should be a rational approach to this. There should be a grounded approach to this. But then where does intuition fit into that? Where does the water energy, where does spiritual energy fit into that? So we may need a little bit of a moment 
to settle into this energy. But of course we will, because we as humanity have been through so many different phases and we always find a way to address whatever energy it is that we find ourselves in. The thing to remember with Neptune though is, Neptune is a very ephemeral energy. It's hard to pin down. When you're in a Neptune transit, it's hard to really understand that that's what's happening unless you're an astrologer and you're looking at the chart. Sometimes it just feels a little off or just feels not grounded or just feels not very contained. Uh, we're willing to overlook things. We're going with the flow. We're uh, summoning our own compassion. It's only when a Neptune transit is over that we're able to see things a little bit more clearly. Neptune is not clear. <laughs> Neptune is very foggy, but also Neptune is very imaginative as well. And for a lot of people, Neptune speaks to our... Um, like what we want on a level of art and music and film. In fact, there are a lot of astrologers who kind of specialize in diving into trends of film and music and television by looking at the cycles of Neptune. So that's a whole area of expertise as well. And so when Neptune changes signs, our musical tastes can go through an evolution as well, collectively speaking, certainly. Uh, the type of music that's being produced, that's being consumed can go through a change. Movies, the technology that's used in movies, the type of movies we want to see can go through a change. And so where it comes to Neptune moving into Aries, uh, we are going to see strong drum beats, right? Uh, we are going to see uh, music that emphasizes sort of the, the pulse of our uh, blood. We are going to see music that reaches to uh, the origins, that connects us to our origins. Uh, we are going to see in film as well, we're going to see characters that are very much um, an exemplification of of the attributes and the higher attributes of being willful. Uh, and we are going to see people who are trying to understand whether we're looking at it in terms of culturally, in terms of the images that we consume, the movies, or whether it is in our own lives as well. Uh, where is it that we can go our own way, but have it also resonate with spirit? Now we are going to fast forward to 2026. This is the big year. As far as looking at the entire decade, what is the standout moment? It really is going to be what starts happening in 2026. And that is Uranus moving into air sign Gemini. And as Uranus steps into this new part of the sky, will rush and very quickly will reach out in supreme harmony with Pluto. This is a type of conversation that astrologers call a shrine. I'm so used to saying square because it was Pluto and Uranus that were speaking in a square conversation from 2012 to 2015. Now, whenever these two planets speak, it represents a time of tremendous social change. Uh, and there can be some upheaval as well. There tends to be a desire for the individual people. They want uh, more equality. They want more rights. They want to feel as if uh, they have more opportunity as well. Well, depending on the nature of the conversation between these two planets, uh, regardless of the nature, it is going to speak to change. But depending on the nature will depend on the outcomes and depend on how it is that we navigate this period forward. So. The one uh, conversation that I remember talking to you guys so much about as we went along week to week, month to month, year to year, between 2012 and 2015, was the square that took place between Uranus and Pluto. One sort of iconic example of that time was uh, the Occupy movement, right? That was one example. And what we saw was people around the world, they were uh, saying, what was it? They were saying like Arab Spring, uh, European uh, Fall, and uh, American Summer, something along those lines. But it was essentially referring to this idea that we are stepping into a new phase in these different places around the world. However, Pluto was square um, Uranus. And so Pluto is the very strong powers. Um, and it is ultimately um, force, uh, all encompassing force. And so even though there were these uh, expressions that took place around the world, Pluto ultimately was able to exert its power, especially in the sign of Capricorn, 
and was able to contain uh, those expressions and those desires uh, for freedom, for equality, for change. Well, this is very different. This is what astrologers call a trine. And when we have such supremely harmonious energy like this, it speaks to an easy way in which the power and the people work together towards sweeping social change. Now, the last time these two planets spoke in this way was way back in the 20s. Now, if you remember the roaring 20s, the 1920s, I mean, so we're talking like a 100 years earlier. That was a time that was characterized by uh, a real movement towards greater equality all around. Um, it really was governments uh, around the world, countries around the world, where we saw equal rights for women start to gain ground more and more places. Uh, where women got the rights to vote. We also saw uh, collectively at that time, a time of overall prosperity. It was sort of the discovery of the teenager, I've heard it called as well. So there was a spirit of fun and possibility and a lot of things changing very quickly. Uh, technology became much more a part of people's lives at that time also. Uh, so we started seeing advancements on the one hand in television, although that was still in its infancy, uh, but we, what we really started seeing was that everybody had a radio and that was the way in which we connected digitally more and more. And so now fast forward, these two planets will speak in supreme harmony, but they will be in air signs this time. The next time they speak will be about 40 years from 2026. I believe it's 2064, right around there. And by then they'll be back in water signs. So that will be a whole other revolution that I will be here to talk about every step of the way. That's going to be fun to be here to talk to you guys about it. But uh, coming back to 2026, um, this is air. And air has to do with... Uh, technology on the one hand. Um, it has to do with how we engage technology, how we use it, how we communicate, how we express ourselves, how we develop ideas. And with uh, Aquarius involved in the age of Aquarius, if there's any doubt that we've stepped into a new age of humanity, this will make it very, very clear. Um, and we'll see the advantages and we're going to go along very willingly. Now, I uh, have considered an interpretation where, and I don't think I'm alone in this, but I know that some astrologers have, I'm sure have talked about, even though I haven't seen it personally, but it seems like so obvious, right? Like something like this could speak to interacting with aliens, exploring more of space. And the reason I say that, hear me out here, is that it is Aquarius as an energy that has to do with the, you know, the really far out, uh, has to do with really eclectic ideas, including ideas around UFOs and aliens. Um, and this is a part of the sky that uh, represents like really allowing yourself to consider what more there could be and holding ideas that other people think is just really unusual or even uh, a little bit uh, eccentric but also maybe a little bit wacky as well. But what it is that we see as wacky may actually end up being reality, uh, especially at this time. There could be an increase in whether it's space exploration or whether it's just taking on new technologies, deeper technologies that integrate them more, not only into our lives, but into our bodies as well. You know, I remember uh, watching an interview once with uh, the futurist Ray Kurzweil. Now, he's also an inventor as well. Fascinating person. Um, I don't remember the name of his book off the top of my head, but just a really interesting interview to watch. And I remember him saying that in the future, every person is going to have as part of their body um, some technology integrated, uh, some sense of computer chip integrated into their body. And I actually think that this is something that we are going to start to see with Uranus moving through Taurus. Um, we're going to see more and more of that. We already have that, of course. We have, like you think about things like pacemakers. This is a technology that people use a part of a machine that people put into their bodies so that they can uh, experience some health-related benefit. Well, Ray Kurzweil thought that it would literally be like taking a pill. You could take a pill and it would have, uh, you know, some sort of battery in there uh, and it would just become part of our body because we understand that there is some benefit to having that. And I think we're going to see that technology start to present itself with Uranus 
in the sign of Taurus, but it is going to be once this configuration takes place between Uranus and Gemini and uh, with uh, Pluto and Aquarius, that this is going to be much more of a normal thing, something that we're incorporating into ourselves much, much more. Now, for better or worse, right? I'm not making a value judgment here, but attempting to sort of in a detached way to contemplate what these symbols could mean for us. Now, there is also an understanding of this energy as to um, how pervasive technology can actually get. And I think that especially when we look at the earlier part of the decade, we look at 2021, where there's so much resistance to having technology be a pervasive thing. This is where we're taking it on that much more willingly. And I also think about how, you know, when Uranus went into Aries, it was so, um, to me, it was so much of YouTube. YouTube really just uh, took over the world once Uranus moved into Aries. And it is so perfect. It's like, it really is YouTube. That is so much about Uranus and Aries. Just the name of it is so Uranus and Aries because it's so much about the individual, you an individual expression and using technology, the tube, in order to express yourself and in order to really be yourself. And I remember at the time, especially in light of the upcoming square uh, between Uranus and Pluto, I said, you know, for better or worse, um, the gatekeepers are not gonna be as relevant. We're gonna see like a bunch of mini empires all over the world. Uh, and that is how people are gonna be moving forward. And there was this great book by Daniel uh, Pink called Free Agent Nation. That was part of my understanding as well. It's not an astrology book at all, but it's all about how the future of employment would be self-employment. And I think that that trend and YouTube being part of that uh, really started with Uranus and Aries, but the technology of YouTube itself was actually developed earlier, was developed with Uranus and Pisces. It was just Uranus and Aries that made it that much more prevalent, that had it uh, become a part of our uh, reality more and more around the world. Uh, well, I do think that when we look back, we will realize that it was uh, with Uranus squaring Saturn, Uranus squaring uh, Jupiter with both Saturn and Jupiter in Aquarius in 2021. Now, this is where the technologies are gonna be new. This is where they're first gonna be introduced. And as I said, there might be some mixed feelings around this, but we'll be embracing it that much more once we get to 2026. Now it's possible that those technologies become more refined. It's possible that those very technologies, uh, their presentation or how they start out or their implications uh, are in some way contained enough so that we are able to gain advantage from it. Um, but do be aware that when I consider this connection between Uranus and Pluto, it really is that life as we live it, as we experience it, as we contemplate it, as we interact with it, is going to go through a fundamental change. Like yes, we'll still be people, we'll still be ourselves, I also thought about with this connection between Pluto and uh, Uranus, both in air signs, particularly with Uranus in the sign of Gemini. You know, I see that as uh, uh, like very much about new tropics. And so new tropics are essentially, it's this whole field of getting more of your brain to work better. So uh, some people like to use uh, supplements or medications. That's a big way in which we understand new tropics, but there are other ways as well. Um, however it is that you can use more of your brain basically is covered under this idea of new tropics and what can we use so that we're using more of our brain function. Um, I think about how if you ever go online and you look into nootropics a little bit, they talk a lot about different medications and different supplements or different activities, uh, different locations that you can be in. I think that this is going to be an area that takes a huge leap forward. I mean, that is one of the clearest indications with this energy, um, where it comes to our understanding of our brains, because it is Gemini and Aquarius as well that are uh, signs that speak to our brain, how our brain functions, uh, how our neural pathways work, how we are thinking, how we are expressing ourselves, how well it is that we are expressing ourselves. 
Um, and so, yes, on the one level with new tropics, we will see huge advancements in that, but also a certain prevalence, a more of a prevalence of that as well. But the other thing, of course, is uh, certain um, treatments and uh, technologies that allow people who maybe didn't have brain function or have lost part of their brain function to experience real breakthroughs in that regard. And I think that that is one of the more hopeful elements to this energy. We can focus on the negative, right? And yeah, there are some things if you contemplate like Big Brother, Big Brother is very Pluto and Aquarius. You think about the symbolism and just cameras everywhere and constantly being monitored. That is part of the fear um, that I think is gonna show itself in 2021. And part of the fear of the age of Aquarius that is already being expressed by some people. But then there are also um, a lot of benefits you think about, you know, it can go to either end of the spectrum and there's a lot in between as well. And so I do think that under this energy, we will see a huge progress made, breakthroughs made where it comes to diseases like Alzheimer's, like dementia. You know, uh, the sign of Aquarius is also connected to a second, uh, sort of a second youth. It has to do with retirement. And so if you think about the sign of Capricorn, it's sort of the pinnacle of achievement and the pinnacle of power. It's reaping the reward of all the effort that you put in. It's asserting yourself as an authority. Um, but then we get to Aquarius. By the time we get to the energy of Aquarius, you are retiring and you really feel free. You feel open to explore again. You feel like, okay, now I can let go of all that you know I thought I was supposed to be. And yes, I was uh, so powerful and so strong and that's great. But now let me be me. Let me enjoy myself. Let me really have fun. And I think that this is one of the more hopeful um, trends that we are going to see, not just Pluto and Aquarius, but especially with Uranus and Gemini supporting that Pluto in Aquarius. It is going to be in 2026 that I really do believe we're going to have big breakthroughs all around where it comes to brain development. But that energy and these two energies in air will be working strong for the better part of seven years as Uranus continues to move through the sign of Gemini. The ways in which we communicate could go through big changes as well as it is uh, the sign of Gemini that has to do with communication uh, and learning could go through big changes also. I'm reminded of how already we can start seeing this, like it's sort of in its infancy, but these technologies where you can put something in your ear uh, and you can talk to somebody who's speaking a completely different language and it is automatically translating what they are saying in your ear in real time. Now, again, the technology is so in its infancy right now, but this is gonna be something that becomes much more pervasive because it is the sign of Gemini that is also connected to hearing. It has to do with um, not necessarily like sound, the way it's connected to five senses, uh, the pleasure of sound, that is very Taurian. But when we look at Gemini, it's the mechanism of hearing, the mechanism of perceiving, uh, the mechanism of communicating and the give and take and all that that involves and the sharing of ideas. And that includes words as well. Words are covered under this part of the sky. And so on a more literal level, it could look like that there are some uh, really cool new words that start to enter our vocabulary in a big way that become official as part of our vocabulary in a big way. But on a more personal level, because it is uh, the sign of Gemini that likes to be spontaneous, that likes to be interactive, uh, chances are that we are going to see like that very technology translating in real time. Uh, really start to take off, really become refined and also almost like become part of our regular travel gear. For those of us who like to travel, like I do, um, it is uh, going to be just one of those go-to things. Like there are certain things, if you are a traveler, you will understand this. If you have important Sag energy or Jupiterian energy in your chart, you know there are certain things every traveler goes with. Uh, for example, smartphone and a, a charger and these different types of things. Well, that will become one of those standard things that you have to take with you when you travel. From 2026 to 2028, we are gonna have a series of eclipses in the same sign that Pluto will be in, in the sign of Aquarius and in its opposite sign as well. It is gonna be the North Node moving through the sign of Aquarius. This is going to accelerate 
this journey. It is going to accelerate this process of the things that I just spoke about, this new age that we are going to be in, the age of Aquarius. We are truly going to be leaping into that future uh, just that much more fully. And it's almost like it's karmic time has come. That is what the nodes represent. Uh, the nodes are ultimately sort of the soul urge of a time. And the nodes in your own chart uh, represent the soul promises that you made to yourself before you incarnated. The transiting nodes, though, are very much about what we as a collective are desiring to move towards on an unconscious level. And so these changes, while they will be very conscious and we're going to know about it, if, you know, Uranus is anything, if Aquarius is anything, it likes to broadcast, you know, very widely. Um, but at the same time, on a deeper level, it is as if karmically we know that we are meant to go in this direction. What I love about this transit for us, well, look, it is the decade ahead and gosh, there's so much to talk about. I feel like as soon as I, uh, you know, leave you guys for a moment, I, I, there's just more ideas bursting forward. And that's part of the exciting thing is that it really can be so much. There's so much potential that we have here to bring forward the best of ourselves, the most brilliant version of ourselves, a more healed version of ourselves. There's so much potential here for us to understand our own power and to be connected to each other. And there's so much potential here for more of us around the world to be aware of our own power to be a force of love and wisdom in our own lives and in the lives of others. One thing that always happens when Uranus trines Pluto is that astrology goes through a huge boom and we always see big advancements in astrology taking place at that time. Uh, new systems, new schools of thought, new technologies, new techniques as well presenting themselves that help us to be connected to the uh, symbolism of the sky to help us to interpret the sky that much more deeply. All of this makes this a truly exciting time to be here, a truly exciting time to be alive. Just one day, one year, and one decade at a time. Well, thank you so much for watching. I'm so very grateful for it. Thank you for hanging in there with me with this Decade Ahead video. I'm going to have so much more to say about this as we go along week to week in the superstar space, month to month on YouTube, year to year on my website and on YouTube and so much more. And of course, every week I'm here with you guys on YouTube exploring the sky. Um, I am just so grateful. I'm so grateful uh, to be here in this moment right now and the exciting things that we have been through and the more exciting things that there are ahead. I think that this is an exciting time for us as a collective. But more importantly, as part of our individual journeys, it's an exciting time of choice. That's what ultimately a dichotomy means. It means we get to choose. We get to choose, are we gonna amplify love and wisdom in the world? Are we gonna be part of a revolution that includes love, that encourages love, that encourages wisdom, that encourages us to recognize the force and the power of love that we can be? I think that is part of what makes this a truly exciting time and of course an expansive time, a revolutionary time whose time has come. Well, stay tuned right now for the preview horoscopes for each and every sign. It's the first minute of an extended video. Uh, each video, I think the shortest video is like uh, 19 minutes and 45 seconds. The longest video is like 29 minutes. So really we're looking at 20 to 30 minutes uh, for each and every sign. That video is available on my website for download. It's for free for superstars in the superstar space. You can learn more all about this uh, by logging on to my website, NadiaShaw.com. And thank you for your support. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Thank you for your love. Um, these videos, these special horoscopes that I do, um, your support of them really does mean so much and your trust really does mean so much. So thank you for that. And I'm just so excited. I think it's gonna be an incredible decade and it will. It'll be a great decade. Enjoy. 
Hello, fabulous superstar Aries. Welcome to your horoscope. Looking at the decade ahead in this special horoscope, I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing decade it is. This is a decade that is going to help you to redefine and understand more what it means to have success on your own terms and where it is that other people fit into that or where it is that they don't. At the same time, you will be redefining what prosperity is for you, what's worth the money and what isn't. But for you, I'm actually going to start with what happens right in the middle of the decade. We're going to start there with Neptune because it is going to be in 2025 that Neptune is going to enter your sign for the better part of the coming 13 years. Now, this move of Neptune in your sign happens about once every 160 years or so. So when it happens, it's once in a lifetime. And there are people out there who have never experienced this. Hello, fabulous superstar Taurus. Welcome to your Decade Ahead special horoscope. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing decade it is. Peak moments are going to occur for you early in the coming decade. In 2021, when Uranus in your sign will connect with the asteroid series, but also speak in conversations of tension with Jupiter and with Saturn. Simultaneously from 2021 to 2023, we are going to have a series of eclipses in your sign and in your opposite sign that is going to only accelerate the process of you being redefined and becoming more yourself than you ever knew before, but also is going to help you to accelerate your journey towards greater love romantic love than you've ever known before as well. Now you add to this as we move later into the decade, you are going to begin powerful long-term cycles. Hello, fabulous superstar Gemini. Welcome to your Decade Ahead special horoscope. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing decade it is. One of the highlights over the course of this decade is going to be the way that the energy moves from Earth to air, and you are at the center of that party. As Pluto moves into fellow air sign Aquarius and Uranus moves into your sign as well, this is going to represent uh, the beginning of a powerful phase of life for you where you are at your brilliant best and it is going to feel as if just about anything is possible. And this will essentially be the case this decade in particular. And that is because Pluto and Uranus will be speaking in harmony right around 2026. That is the standout year. For Hello, fabulous superstar Cancer. Welcome to your special horoscope looking at the decade ahead, the 2020s. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing decade it is. It will begin with eclipses in your sign and your opposite sign. And it will end with eclipses in your sign and your opposite sign. Now that right there says it is going to be a time of a lot of change, a lot of fate, and a feeling that you are attracting people into your life who are a part of helping you to move forward in life, in love, and beyond. Now you add to this some pretty intense energy that you've been used to having in your opposite sign with Pluto and Saturn now coming to a crescendo at the very beginning of the decade, well, that is going to transform dramatically once Pluto changes signs mid-decade. So there's a lot to talk about here. Hello, fabulous superstar Leo. Welcome to your special horoscope looking at the decade ahead, the 2020s. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing decade it is. Now, right out of the gate, as we are starting the decade, it's more about paying attention to your day, to the small moments, the daily rituals, but that energy is going to change dramatically as we move towards the end of 2020. And there will be a powerful buildup of support, of blessings from other people. Your one-on-one -on -one alliances, personal and professional, are part of some of your most powerful learning, the most powerful truth you're gonna reach about yourself, but also big blessings. Now this trend only accelerates as we get to the middle of the decade and Pluto enters your opposite sign 
speaking in supreme harmony with Uranus. And we've also got a series of eclipses in your sign and your opposite. Hello, fabulous superstar Virgo. Welcome to your special horoscope, looking at the decade ahead, the 2020s. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing decade it is. Now, as we are starting this decade, we have an abundance of earth energy. We've got some powerful water energy as well. Now, of course, earth is your own element. You're able to tap into this energy that much more to your advantage. But as we move towards the middle of the decade, the energy will start to shift in powerful ways. First, of course, reaching a crescendo before it does. And once it does, once the energy starts moving in the direction of air and of fire, your focus is going to change in powerful ways as well. And so will some of the bigger blessings that find you. So there's a lot to talk about here as we start the decade 2020, January 2020. A lot of astrologers have been talking about the meeting of Hello, fabulous superstar Libra. Welcome to your special horoscope looking at the decade ahead, the 2020s. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing decade it is. The energy is going to change big time. In the middle of the decade, two major outer planets will move into fellow air signs, giving you that much easier access to their energy in a way that's harmonious and uplifting. Pluto and Uranus both are going to form what is called a grand trine with you, marking an important period for you where chances are a lot will be changing in a way that you love. Now you add to this middle of the decade as well, Neptune moving into your opposite sign and it is all about soul mate connections, fortifying them, finding them, amplifying them that much. Hello, fabulous superstar Scorpio. Welcome to your special horoscope looking at the decade ahead, the 2020s. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing decade it is. We are going to have between 2021 and 2023, a series of eclipses taking place in your sign and in your opposite sign. This is by far going to represent one of the peak time frames of this larger decade where you are redefined in important ways and you come to understand that you are no longer whom it is that you were. In the process, your relationships are going to have to keep up if they are going to move into the future with you. And this idea of who stays and who goes and who is a part of your future is going to be key in 2021 and right to the middle of the decade. It is after that that you are going to find greater stability in the people that you align with and a truly healing influence coming in as well. Hello, fabulous superstar Sagittarius. Welcome to your special horoscope looking at the decade ahead, the 2020s. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing decade it is. And I think that given the way that it begins, uh, it really is going to be one of these time frames that you know everything can change and very much for the better. And that is because we are going to have a series of eclipses in your sign and in your opposite sign from 2020 to 2021. And this is a alignment, a powerful realignment with a higher, more loving vision for your life. Now, I want you to think about all those times in which there were closures that took place that you were grateful for, pathways where you knew you had walked as far as you were meant to, that had run their course, and the absolute joy and freedom of knowing Hello, fabulous superstar Capricorn. Welcome to your special horoscope looking at the decade ahead, the 2020s. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing decade it is. You will notice the shift and major transformations will finally, or at least the more intense part of the transformations are going to come to a close for now. You will be starting the year, starting the decade, in a period between eclipses and it is your sign that will host 
the last eclipse of the last decade of 2019. And as you start this decade, within the first two weeks, lunar eclipse in your opposite sign and the conjunction of Pluto and Saturn, an event that astrologers have been talking about forever in your sign. Now, this is a big turning point for you, a big moment of honesty. Hello, fabulous superstar Aquarius. Welcome to your special horoscope looking at the decade ahead, the 2020s. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing decade it is. Now, as we start this decade, we've got an abundance of Earth energy. Your ruling planet is in an Earth sign. Pluto is in an Earth sign. These two planets getting together in Earth signs. Along with Jupiter, we've got water energy as well uh, thanks to Neptune well boy does all of that change by the time we get to the middle of the decade Pluto moves into air your sign it is Uranus that moves into air as well and as these two planets connect it is as if you come to know yourself and your power and happiness in a way that you just never have before. It's also going to be that Neptune will move into a fire sign as well. And if you think about air and... Hello, fabulous superstar Pisces. Welcome to your decade ahead special horoscope looking at the 2020s. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing decade it is. With all the talk of what's happening in 2020, I think it really is going to be 2024 that things accelerate for you in a big way. So what are some of the things that are happening? Well, we are going to start having eclipses in your sign and your opposite sign for just over two years. You add to this Neptune reaching a culmination moment, a, a powerful sense of completion of the larger cycle of Neptune moving through your sign that you have been in since 2012 and Saturn entering your sign as well right around the same time. Well, it tells me that this is a time and a decade that is setting you up for major shit. Get your decade ahead horoscope for your sign at NadiaShaw.com.